Welcome to Loriston. Gonna do a uh, little island hopping today. Looks like we got a little rain here. Shouldn't be too big a deal. Uh, you got rain in this area all the time. Let's get it going. Let's turn the fuel on. Let's turn the rotating beacon on. Mixture rich. The carb heat is cold. Turn the master switch on. Battery on. Let's prime the engine. So what we're doing today is a we're reflying. There's uh engine is primed. Mixture is rich. Throttle open a half inch. Hand on the throttle. Engage the starter. Engine turns over. Oil pressure coming up. Oil temperature okay. Let's get it to 1200 RPM for warm up. So what we're doing today is we're going to refly a flight that I did uh, about a year ago uh, and see how Microsoft Flight Simulator has, involved, has evolved over the last year. Um, 122.8 is uh, going to give us the common traffic advisory frequency. I'm not going to do an engine run up, but I am going to check the flight controls up on that side, down on that side on that side, down on that side. Um, flaps are all the way down on that side and indicating all the way down on that side. Flaps, I'm going to lean the mixture for taxi here a little bit. Flaps are up on that side, up on that side. Elevator is working properly, so flight controls are free and correct. Let's turn on the nav and strobe lights. Let's turn on my taxi light. And the uh, taxi light is going to be on for a very short period of time because the taxi is not very long here. So, release the parking brake. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit more nose up trim in. This plane likes a little bit more nose up trim than. Then, uh, then what's indicated there. So let's test the brakes. Always want to test the brakes as soon as you get started. Uh, this is Loriston Airport. This is a uh, an airport that was done by a uh, a user on FlightSim.to. I will put the. I will put all these airports, there's a couple of them that are um, custom airports, I'll put them all in the uh, description for the video. Alright, looks like the weather's coming from the south. Typical Caribbean, just a little bit of rain here and there, no big deal. Uh, Loris in traffic, uh, November 4753 x-ray, taxiing to runway 9 for departure, Loriston. So let's back taxi here a little bit. Um, don't see anything on the runway. I don't see anybody on the final. So I always like to taxi on the on the center line of the runway. A lot of people when they back taxi on runways, they'll back taxi or taxi to one side or the other and the best policy in my opinion taxi down the middle of the runway because if you're coming in to land you might not see anything on center line and think gee there's nobody there runway is clear and you know I mean sometimes people can miss the forest for the trees and they don't see you taxiing down the side of the runway so I used to I used to taxi down the side of the runway as well. I used to get off center line basically as soon as I touched down, just to kind of be out of the way. But really, when you're on a runway, you want to be in the way. So let's make the uh, turn here. 
Alright, let's get ourselves established on the center line. It's runway 09. Heading indicator checks for runway 09. Mixture rich, carpet cold, flaps are set. Trim is set for takeoff. Loris in traffic, Cessna, November 4753 X-ray, taking off runway 09, departure to the north, Loriston. And bring in the power. Takeoff power is set, engine instruments are in the green. Release the brakes. A little bit of right rudder, keep us on the center line. And uh, let's see here, airspeed is aligned. 60 knots, 65, and rotate rather abruptly. And uh, I can tell you, having watched the video I'm going to compare this to earlier today, I can already see the, uh, there's a lot more detail in the, in the mountains, and more trees. Great, really. Uh, on course heading here to be about zero five zero. Although, come around this side of the this side of the hill here. Lost in traffic. Just four seven five three X ray left uh, crosswind departure off runway nine. Lost So. Water looks a little bit uh, churned up today. But, boy, I tell you, this island looks gorgeous, doesn't it? Climbing through 1,000 feet or 1,500, there is no fuel pump on this airplane. So, no need to uh, turn the fuel pump off. Now, our first destination on today's on today's Caribbean island hopping adventure is Union Island. And 1,400, about 50 feet to go. We like to push the nose over, you know, that abruptly. And bring the power back to 2,400. ourselves into a level flight attitude and roll in some trim. Good, 1,500 feet. Hopefully we're getting away from this weather a little bit. Kind of see some old traffic down there. And uh, we are on our way to Union Island. The Union Island traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray, five miles to the south inbound, will stop Union Island. This is going to be runway 8. So, big fat line about five miles south, and actually about four miles south, so we definitely want to get the whole landing process moving here. And uh, I tell you, this is looking great so far. Um, bring the power back here. Bring it back to about 
files, and we've got the car key in. back into the flap range here, put in the first notch of flaps, alright, Union Island traffic, and will the, uh, in Cessna November 4753 x-ray, uh, war mile, final for runway 8, Union Island, boy that just rolled right off my tongue, didn't it? Second notch of flaps. Get us slowed down. Gosh, this looks gorgeous. Alright. Mixture is rich. There's no fuel pump. Car key is set. Union. Union Island traffic and uh, Cessna 53 X ray, short final runway 8, Union Island. I keep wanting to say uh, Anguilla 264, it's the other uh, when I'm flying the Islander, it's the call sign I use. So, this is going to be a quick one, so we got to be ready for uh, get on the ground and reconfigure the airplane here for takeoff. Airspeed is good. All right. Start rounding it out here a little bit. All right. Let's put the carb in full power. We have one notch of flaps. It's probably not a recommended procedure, but I wouldn't do that in real life that way. Um, The rate to bring up the second notch of flaps. I wouldn't do that in real life that way. Um, but in the simulator, you can get away with it. Yeah, I think you could do a touch and go there, a legit touch and go there. If you, uh, Really chopped and dropped and got down nice and low. I'm gonna stop at a thousand feet on this one. Which is probably what I should have done last one. Traffic uh, and uh, Cessna 4753 X ray, five miles to the south, inbound, full stop. Uh, so, let's see 
here. This is going to be runway 13. That Kunan, and this is definitely going to be a little bit easier of a touch and go than, uh, than the last one was. 6,000 feet to work with here. So, um, Kunan traffic, and, uh, Cessna 5.3 X-ray is on a 3 mile rate right base, runway 13. Uh, let's put 13 on that right hash mark there. So one of the reasons I'm doing this flight is because I have been pretty critical of Particularly Sim Update 5 for Microsoft Flight Simulator. I thought it was a pretty terrible update. And uh, I still think it was a pretty terrible update, but um, this is the most recent update. Sim up, uh, World Update 5. I may have my numbers wrong there. Quote me on that. Might have been Sim Update 6 and World Update 5. I don't remember. This is version 1.19. And uh, I just wanted to see how this compares to what I thought was fantastic a year ago. Um, and I have to say that so far, I think now in version 1.19 that Microsoft Flight Simulator is even better. Uh, right now, so. See anybody coming down final? Kunan traffic, uh, Cessna 5.3 X-ray, 3 mile final, runway 1.3, Kunan. Uh, actually more like a mile and a half final. You know, so, um, looking at what I thought was fantastic a year ago, um, This is clearly, clearly better. So therefore, I should be happier, right? Kunan traffic, uh, Cessna 5.3 X-ray, short final, runway 13, Kunan. And if you're wondering why I'm, make, why I'm making these radio calls, it's because I am on BATSIM, which is... Uh, I mean, these are all uncontrolled fields anyway, for, for sure looked on the sectional charts, but um, that sim is pretty awesome, and so I'm just out, um, you know, making my standard radio calls that I would make in a real flight, just bring the nose up here, pull crosswind correction, so let's put the car key in. Let's put the flaps up. And alright, let's bring in the power. Alright, takeoff power is set. Airspeed is alive. 60 knots, 65, rotate. Uh, let's see here, you can keep 
seeing me move that, do this little thing with the screen where it moves up and down is because the, uh, the little bar at the top of the screen doesn't go away unless you do that. So, I don't know why, but it's what it is. That's Kunal Island. My profound apologies to anybody from this area if I butcher the names of these beautiful places. Because um, my intention in flying here is to show everybody how awesome this is. Show everybody how awesome this area is. If I call something by a name that it is not right, mispronounce something, it is not my intention. Once again, uh, <laughs> this looks gorgeous. Alright, 50 feet below, start pushing the nose over, pull the power back to 2400. Push the nose down, just put in a little trim. So, our next stop is Mystique, and this is a really, really cool airport. I think the same person who did this uh, airport did the first one that I took off from Morriston. And uh, this is a really cool airport because, and I mean, just generally speaking, life. It's a really cool airport because um, you know, a lot of these little islands there isn't a flat spot to put an airport, you know. Uh, and this one is one of them. And there's a let's see here. Mystique traffic. Cessna 4753 X ray 10 miles to the southwest inbound full stop. Musty. Runway is 09. Um, and this is one of them. And this is really nestled down. into a little valley here in the in the 
Coney Island and so there's a there's a pretty big it's a short runway the runway is 2546 feet which is really that long and it's got a really long displaced threshold and the displaced threshold when we get there you'll see is there's a series of arrows on the runway leading up to a white stripe across the runway. You can't land before that stripe. You can't land on any of the area where the arrows are. And the whole purpose of a displaced threshold for anybody who cares is um, Is to it's not because that area of the runway can't handle the weight of an airplane or anything like that. It's because if you were to land on that area of the runway, you'd pretty much be in danger of hitting something. Uh, and you'll see what I mean when we get in here. Traffic Cessna 4753 X ray five miles to the southwest inbound full stop runway niner steep. So you get out this way a little bit and uh, give myself a nice mile final here. A little bit of a longer final approach. Um, just because you really got to put this one on uh, properly. Traffic Cessna 53 X ray and a three mile final runway matter. seen the the uh, happy lights on the left side of the runway a little bit high which is fine in this airplane it's fine but in that second notch of flaps those is going to want to come up but this airspeed it's not going to or this power setting anyway, it's not going to Mystique traffic and uh, Cessna 53 X ray, short final runway niner mystique. Okay. One mile final runway zero nine. And this one I'm definitely going to uh, have to pull off the runway and taxi back. There's no question about it. But it's going to give us a chance to see this little airport, which is. Good. 
still want to stay a little bit high. Uh, I do want to not hit that tower. I think this is going to get a little turbulent right in here. This is, yeah, you see that? Alright, power is out right now. There's those arrows I was talking about. Here is the that white line. Airspeed is good. Kissed that one on, didn't I? Ah, right. It shouldn't be too hard to slow down going uphill like this. So, put on the brakes. Lean the mixture a little bit for taxi. And not going to do anything else until we get off the runway. Uh, Mystique traffic. Uh, Cessna 53 X ray back taxiing runway 09 for departure. Mystique. Alright, I am gonna actually put the carp heat in, reduce the flaps to one notch because I'm gonna want to see a little bit of help there on the way out. So let's let's stop right here and we'll take a little look at this airport. So this is. Like I said, an airport that uh, that somebody did, you can get for free at flightsim.to. Put the link in the description. Really cool job. I mean, look at this. So let's get back cruising here now for a displaced threshold. Let's see, here's the wrong of the airport a little bit more. Always better view of that. How cool, right? Is the guy driving off the side of the runway. Um, now this displaced threshold you can use for takeoff because you're not going to hit anything. See that? See that big hill right there? That's what they're trying to get you to avoid by having this displaced threshold. If if you could land right here, you would really have to, uh, you know. Uh, chop and drop, so to speak. Chop the power and really kind of drop in to try and make this runway. So they, uh, the displaced, displaced threshold prevent you from doing that. Or encourage you not to, rather. Alright, let's go mixture rich. Carp heat is cold. One notch of flaps. We're going to do a short field takeoff. Uh, Mustique traffic and will uh, Cessna 4753 X ray taking off runway 9 or departure to the north. Mystique. So, mixture rich, carp heat is cold. We're going to bring in the power, full power. Engine instruments are in the green. Release the brakes. And that should help us get off the ground here. Uh, see that? The airplane just flew itself. I didn't even pull back. The airplane flew itself right off the ground, which is perfect. I can bring up the flaps right now. I've got a positive rate of climb. I'm not going to because there's a lot of terrain right here and I don't really want to be reconfiguring the airplane right now 400 feet above the ground bring up that notch of flaps and uh, just makes it a little bit a little bit safer so get that nose down a little bit pick up some airspeed and a left turn to a heading of three, four, two. It's going to bring us the runway one, two. So there's Mystique Island. How cool is that? 
Alright, bring the power back. This one will go to a thousand feet. Bring the power back. Push the nose down. Get some trim. JF Mitchell traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray, 10 miles to the southeast inbound runway 12 JF Mitchell. This is a cool, uh, this is a cool airport too. Stop this flight right here, but I think I'm having so much fun. I'm gonna add one more leg and we're gonna go up to uh, we're gonna go up to Argyle International. St. George. So, Jeff Mitchell in the Grenadines. Elevation of 15 feet above sea level. Runway 1 2, 3,609 feet. Beautifully manicured. Uh, Tarmac. So, better today than it was a year ago. Certainly a whole lot better than it was a month ago. And uh, this has been a really fun little flight and this is what I spent most of my time doing uh, in the first year of, or the first six months anyway of, of the simulator was just flying around the Caribbean. It was so cool. And then then with uh, update in August, or whenever it was, end of July, middle of July, August, it was pretty bad, and it really took away the joy that I had from flying this, so I'm glad, very, very glad that it's back. Mitchell traffic, Cessna 5.3 X-ray on a right downwind runway 1.2 JF Mitchell. So, car peak. Power to 2000. Maintain level flight. That'll get us back into the white arc. Let's put the uh, first notch of laps in. JF Mitchell traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray turning right base runway 12, JF Mitchell. This is the one time when flying a uh, high wing airplane. Not, it is flying a low wing airplane. 
landings, but uh, when you're making a right base like this, you can't see the runway. So, I'm going to bring the power right back here. So many of these airports in the Caribbean, like there's just there's just no way around it. You're gonna have to make a funky little approach, and this is one of them. You know, oftentimes the uh, the only flat land that's available. JF Mitchell traffic Cessna 53 X-ray short final runway one two JF Mitchell. Um, oftentimes the only bit of power is out completely now. The only bit of flat land they have is kind of on the edge of the island. Ah, Uphill there. I think we're gonna do a little. No, let's, let's see here. Bring it to a full stop. Let's bring up one notch of flaps. To put in the carb heat, and we should have enough power. To, we should have enough room to get out of here. Rather. Alright, JF Mitchell traffic, Cessna 53 X-ray, taking off runway 12, departure to the north. JF Mitchell. Alright, bring the power in. Take off power is set, engine instruments in the green. Release the brakes. are up, car beats. hold, 75 knots, we should do just fine here, climbing out, uh, our next stop, our next and final stop today, it is going to be Argyle International Airport, before we get there, let's appreciate this gorgeous scenery here. Pretty lonely flight, hasn't it? Which I guess is not all that. Surprising. Thirteen hundred feet for one thousand five hundred.
basically on a, <laughs> on a straight in final for uh, the airport we're going to. I don't think that's beautiful. I don't know what to tell you. It's really pretty cool. And, uh, oh, that guy has the hair here. And to me, what, what, uh, you know, between this and the Islander, uh, those are the two airplanes that flown the most. Uh, hold on one second. Argyle traffic, Cessna 4753 X ray, 10 miles to the south, inbound, full stop, Argyle. Um, both in real life and in the simulator, um, what makes this airplane so fun to me uh, is how simple it is to fly. Like, you, you don't, it's so slow. There's nothing, you're not in a hurry to do anything. You know, you don't you don't ever feel like uh, like oh boy if I don't get this done I'm in deep doo doo, you know. I mean a lot of airplanes, if you're trying to make quick hops, you know, from you know, airports that are five miles apart, like we are here today, you've got to reconfigure the plane pretty quickly. Um, sometimes it's difficult to slow it down. Um, sometimes it won't climb. Without a pretty significant reconfiguration, etc., etc. So, to me, I just think this is such a great airplane. For exactly this kind of thing. So runway four here. We are final final stop. Uh, and we're about five miles away. So Argyle traffic. Cessna four seven five three X rays on a five mile final for runway uh, four. Argyle. This one's over in center line. And this is the thing. Like you can <laughs> you can be on final approach in this airplane at cruise speed. <laughs> it's just not... There's just not that much going on. Which I think is great. So I'm going to bring the power back on the carb heat. Ending here. Plane and I will argue about it for a little while. Maybe a little bit of a right crosswind because I'm clearly getting blown off the side here. 
Argyle, traffic and uh, Cessna 4753 X-ray, short final runway 4 Argyle. See the nose is pointing off to the right, that means we got a right crosswind. I think one time in my life I'd like to have two whites and two reds on the Vassies, but those four lights there on the left of the runway, but I just don't know if that's ever gonna happen. Alright, we're just gonna keep it nice and steady. flight. Keep pulling the nose up. So the airplane doesn't want to fly anymore. And down we go. Um, I didn't put in any crosswind correction and I should have. And that's why when you make ground contact... Boy, this is a bumpy runway. That's why when you make ground contact, the nose kind of jumps over to the right, and then you've got to correct, and it doesn't make you look very good. That is because I did not put in any crosswind correction. Which, ladies and gentlemen, is bad piloting. Argyle traffic, Cessna 4753 X-ray is clear of the runway, Argyle. So, come to a stop, clean up the airplane, put the carb heat in, put the flaps up, and lean the mixture a bit for taxi. And, uh, let's see here. Bring in a wee bit of power. I imagine they probably want us little boys over here to the left. I'm going to go over here so we can get a little bit of a view of this airport. See that uh, KLM traffic right there, that KLM airplane right there. We're going to park right over here with the big boys. Make a nuisance of ourselves. So we'll come to a complete stop. Mixture to idle. Cut off. Uh, let's see. We'll turn our lights off. Throttle is idle. Turn the mags off, and we'll take a nice little peek here around the airport. So, there ain't no doubting it, folks. Uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is definitely uh, come a long way in a year. I mean, it was great a year ago. It was kind of revolutionary, I guess, in a way, because of uh, you know the streaming data um, and getting this area of the world, which you know, used to be dead. I mean, nobody did any sceneries for it. Nobody really did any airports for it. So when you flew around down here, it was just blue and turquoise and kind of generic. And uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator has changed all of that. Um, a huge thank you to the uh, the people who are doing the, the custom airports down here on Flight Sim TO because you guys are making this uh, even better. So, I have to, uh, I have to say, pretty pleased with this. And with that, we're going to turn off the master and battery switch. That'll be the end of today's flight. And uh, thanks for coming along.